The Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival has grown over the last 25 years to become one of the top three competitions for young organists in North America. The Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival is an amazing legacy for my husband. The Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival is a celebration of music, arts, scholarship, and collegiality. The Albert Schweitzer Organ Competition was definitely the catalyst in my career that gave me the confidence to pursue concert organ as a full-time musician. The Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival is an excellent opportunity to celebrate young talent. The Organ Festival is providing a really, really important opportunity for students of the organ, particularly young students of the organ. And I think it's so important that it is named after Albert Schweitzer. When we bring all these people together every year for this festival, it really allows people to make new connections, new friendships, and it, it sort of reinforces their love and affirms that their love of the instrument. I see a lot of young organists that are carrying on a tradition that is nearly a thousand years old. Welcome to Trinity College, home of the Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm Christopher Houlihan, college organist and director of chapel music and artistic director of the Schweitzer Festival. The mission of our festival is to encourage and inspire excellence in organ performance. Each year, emerging artists at both the high school and young professional level perform in an annual competition here at Trinity earning significant cash prizes. What started as a chance meeting in 1996 has blossomed into an internationally recognized event and one of the top North American competitions for young organists. But to get the full picture, we have to go back a bit further to the life and work of a remarkable man, Albert Schweitzer. So the Albert Schweitzer Institute is basically dedicated to the idea of perpetuating the legacy of Albert Schweitzer, who was the 1952 Nobel Peace Laureate. Of all the things that Albert Schweitzer was expert in, medicine, philosophy, theology, music was probably his first love. When he was a child growing up, um, his father was a minister and he used to play the organ in his father's church just and play around with the organ and everything else. The legend has it that one day the organist phoned in sick and Schweitzer actually played the organ music for the, for the church's service that day without even being able to reach the pedals with his feet. So music, I think, was his first calling, his first love, and he resolved early on in his life to um, study music, and it's really one of the first areas that he um, did study. He became expert in the interpretation of the organ music of Bach, and then as he developed as a practitioner and as a technician, really, of the organ, he also started to develop the sort of philosophies and techniques for maintaining and tuning the organ that are still in use today. Later in his life, when he dedicated his life to uh, serving others, to actually improving the human condition at his hospital in Africa, he used music as a way to raise money. 
Um, my predecessor, David Ives, used to tell the story, he was a little bit like Bono of, of his era. You know, he was like this rock star who would pull huge crowds to hear him play the organ. And he would use those funds then to fund the, the necessities for the hospital. I get the sense that Schweitzer never wanted to be too far away from his music. He brought a piano to his um, hospital in Africa, and he had an organ that he traveled with as well. It's a reed organ, a double reed organ, um, that collapses into a, a wooden box, basically, that you could pretty much carry as extra luggage on the plane or on the ship that you were taking to Africa. So he had his music with him wherever he went. It wasn't simply practicing for the next concert. It was part of his life. Dana Spicer, and this is the meeting house at First Church of Christ in Wethersfield, which is where the festival originated. Uh, I am an honorary member of the board, and my husband was one of the co-founders. My husband met Harold Robles through uh, a fellow church member who was interested in providing fresh water to an area in South America. And he thought that the Schweitzer Institute might perhaps be interested in helping, if he paid for all of it, that they would sponsor it. And it turned out that they did not need his process. But in the meantime, David talked to Harold Robles and they started talking about the organ festival and David had always wanted to encourage young organists. He felt that people needed to know the range of the organ. We then talked about Schweitzer, organ. I had always seen his name on my Bach books and we got the talking sports flues. We were going higher in our chairs. And he and said, still going, by the way. And what he said, he said, we have a, a, a festival in Holland and we need a church in America. We can do the same thing. He loved the pipe organ because he had an entire orchestra at his fingertips. Really, it's a glorious instrument, not just for church, although most of them are in churches. And that was why he had the connection with First Church, because part of the Schweitzer Festival has a portion that is a hymn playing competition and that was his, his desire was to spread the gospel and he used music and hymn playing and he was one of the most amazing hymn players I've ever heard, probably. Well, I'm only prejudiced. <laughs> I, hopefully David's looking down and smiling. <laughs> he's proud of what he started. <laughs> The festival had a, a great home at First Church for about 18 years and when David Spicer, our founder, was diagnosed with cancer, I think he gave a lot of thought to his legacy and certainly the festival is one of his biggest legacies and he wanted it to continue so David um, approached several of his colleagues in the area including John Rose, uh, then college organist here, and Christopher Houlihan and um, asked him you know, if it could become a, a, a part of this college and a part of the tradition here. And so the, the Trinity College is very fortunate and proud to host the festival every year. And certainly having it at an academic institution um, lends a lot to the reputation of the festival and, and broadens its appeal, I think, to a larger audience. The festival has really grown quite a bit since it moved to Trinity College and a large part of that is just the location and our ability to almost take over the chapel for a weekend. So we, uh, we've, been, we've been having these large concerts uh, with you know hundreds if not thousands of audience members. Um, certainly right before COVID in 2019 we had two amazing sold out concerts with the Hartford Symphony, Christopher Houlihan, Carolyn Kwan conducting. And uh, that, that kind of programming would not have worked at First Church simply because of the building size. We were able to put uh, you know, a full organ and a full orchestra here in the chapel and, and really fill it. And the electricity was, was so palpable. Um, and this space as well, there's a lot of acoustical reverberation and uh, the sound was truly electrifying as it came down the chapel. The festival is essential 
and it's essential because the organ, like any other classical instrument, needs constant energy and an injection of artistic vision in order to perpetuate it as a, a viable instrument and one that people want to hear. And the mission of the festival is to um, accelerate excellence in organ and to nurture that. Uh, excellence in organ playing. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter if someone wins the festival or not. Simply by participating as an applicant, we are encouraging them to perform at their highest level. I'm Elsie Chris. I'm the university organist and artist in residence here at Wesleyan University. Um, and I'm also a touring concert organist. Um, people may know me from the PBS documentary Pipe Dreams, um, which has sort of crystallized maybe um, the competition route that I took um, as I sort of got here. Actually, the first competition I actually had any success in was the Albert Schweitzer competition, which actually kind of set me on my way, kind of gave me the confidence to do like, you know, eight or nine more competitions after that. And now I'm able to have a university job and it's pretty sweet. So, you know, it all kind of connects. The Schweitzer competition was kind of like a very, very well established uh, competition for young people. And I think a lot of that has to do with how hard David Spicer worked, God rest his soul. Um, he really, really created a culture where the kids were aware of the competition. I think uh, when I was growing up, it was considered like a real, like, real hot shot thing to win the competition. And I think that's due in part because uh, early on you had people like Paul Jacobs uh, to win the competition. So there's always been this very, very high bar albeit in the middle of Connecticut where we all live, not necessarily like uh, uh, the organ capital of the world, but and yet still uh, many of us traveled here and applied here to really have the experience of competing in this competition, which we all knew was visible enough to really give us a career boost. Winning that really gave me the confidence to say, oh gosh, like I might actually be able to make it in this field. And there were people who told me at the time, oh, you're too young, you're too this. And the thing that I really believed in about the Schweitzer competition is that if I had something to offer, that they would hear it. My name is Monica Chaus Burney, and um, I'm a concert organist. And so I guess I competed in fall of 2015. I was kind of looking around for contests that sort of made sense. Um, and entered, and it was a great experience for me. So I remember choosing to enter this contest because I thought the requirements were really smart. I remember it being pretty laid back, and um, the other competitors were lovely, and we kind of hung out and chatted um, during the whole process. I think it was sort of a turning point where I was starting to feel like I could play, and I was kind of seeking recognition from other people on that. Um, so this was fall of 2015, and I was signed with Karen McFarlane in January of 2016. So, you know, entering and winning this contest when I did, I think was an important sort of validation of, yes, you're doing great, keep up the good work, people are noticing, you know, professionally and personally, I think I did it at exactly the right time and everybody was very encouraging, um, which is nice. My name is Alexander Padovina. I am the 2019 first prize winner of the Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival and I'm here at Bushnell Auditorium to perform this upcoming concert in October. These days, I am working at St. Bartholomew's Church in Manhattan. I'm the associate organist and choir master, and I'm also the director of the choristers program. And I have no doubt whatsoever that my competing in the Schweitzer competition was an important step in getting me to the place I am today. Despite all of the 
anxiety and nerves, it all worked out. Um, it was a really great experience and plenty of friendly people and wonderful advice and encouragement from not only the judges but the other competitors and all sorts of people who came to support all of the competitors. It was a wonderful experience all around. The festival, I think, lends itself to some deeper meaning. I think throughout competing in the festival and experiencing all of the events, one can't help but be reminded of the very deliberate sense that the competition was named for Dr. Schweitzer, who was somewhat of a Renaissance man, between being a humanitarian, a physician, a scholar, and an organist. I think the festival is different from other competitions because it has a certain homegrown feel to it. It was started as a competition at a church and it, it's grown amazingly since then. But to this day, it, it retains that feeling. It's not simply just a competition, it's truly so much more than that. Named after the worthy legacy of a Renaissance man and brought to life by dedicated and talented lovers of organ music, the Albert Schweitzer Organ Festival Hartford has been inspiring and supporting young organists for many years, with many more to come. This year, 2022, marks the 25th anniversary of the festival. Join us for the Young Professional Competition on Saturday, October 22nd, starting at 10 a.m right here at Trinity College. Later that day at 4 p.m., the festival concludes with an organ extravaganza concert featuring Grammy award-winning organist Paul Jacobs, our 2019 first prize winner, Alex Padovina, and Carolyn Kwan conducting the Hartford Symphony Orchestra. The concert will be held at Mortensen Hall at the Bushnell Center for the Performing Arts in Hartford, and it will highlight the hall's extraordinary and rarely heard 1929 Austin pipe organ. Tickets are on sale now at bushnell.org. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in Hartford.